All right, hi everybody, uh, Ryan here again today. Uh, so, got a wheel hub here. Uh, we've, we've done a lot right lately on um, wheel seals, bearings and all that. Um, did a hub a while back, uh, we ended up replacing the whole hub unit. And I uh, actually had, uh, I think we had a comment where somebody's actually asking about replacing the races. Um, if you buy these whole hub assemblies, uh, which I, I did a short video on this, I don't think we posted it yet, I did it on my phone. Um, so I'll have to get that out there on, on these ConMet uh, hub assemblies. Uh, but anyways, they're about, they're almost $600. You can buy this whole unit that has the uh, spindle spacer, bearing, seal, and it has a little bungee cord in there, holds it all together, and you can just basically just put it on, torque it to 300 or whatever the manufacturer's specs are, and uh, you're good to go. Um, in this case, the uh, customer, this was off a of steer, uh, driver's side steer. Uh, the wheel seal was bad. It wasn't terrible. It, it was just kind of seeping. It wasn't all over the brake shoes and everything. Um, so I pulled the, the hub cap off of it, and, and I could, well, after I took the wheel off, I could move this hub at least a sixteenth of an inch, you know, and they're supposed to be like one to three thousandths, I think. Uh, so when you're moving it a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch, you got a problem right off the bat, I knew a problem. And on top of that, uh, there was like maybe a tablespoon of oil left in the hub. So I pulled it all apart, and uh, here's the old bearing, which we'll do a close-up on this here in a second. Uh, but you can... You can hear the difference. It, it's got pitting in the rollers. The cage is pretty tore up, which I'll show you here a little bit closer in a second. And uh, so here's a new bearing. And you can see how that's the sound, it's tight. Now this one, you can definitely tell a difference. This one, he's lucky uh, that, that these rollers didn't come out of the cage. Cause if that happens, it actually, the whole hub can go past, it'll wear down the nut, the wash, the locking devices. And your whole hub and wheel and everything come off the front of the truck. And on a on a driver's side, that could be it, it could put you in across the highway or on oncoming traffic. So it could be pretty pretty dangerous. So it was, luckily we found this in time, but it did ruin a lot of times with bearings. You can get away with the the races will still be good, and you'll put new bearing cones in it. Um, in this case, it's got a really bad groove in it, so we're going to do races on this. Uh, so. We'll come in, uh, I'll give you guys a close-up on this bearing here. So here's a close-up of the bearing. And as you can see, there's pretty bad pitting where, where the, the rollers are starting to come apart. And on this one, even, even on the cage, there's some bad spots. Uh, let me find that right here. You can see that that's metal where that's starting to come, where it's starting to wear into the cage. And once that happens, like I said, this the rollers can separate from the sleeve here, the carrier, and uh, that's, that's when you'll lose that whole wheel. Now over here on the race, you see there's a really, really good groove. You can see it. So this race is shot. So I mean, if I put a new, just throw a new cone in there, it's gonna wear to match that and it's gonna do, ruin, that, ruin that new bearing cone. So we gotta get these out of here. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. I mean, I can get in here with a with a big socket. I think I've got a two and five sixteenths here, which actually come in from. This is the outer bearing. Obviously, the wheels on this side and the inner bearing. Inner bearing is always bigger. So I mean, I can get in that side to press this out, but it becomes a problem with the the other bearing because I can't get something big enough in there to press that out. There is a little tool that's out there. I don't have it, um, but uh, I, I it, they're hard to find. Uh, so. What we're going to do, I had a friend tell me uh, about this trick, is you can take a MIG welder and weld a bead around these, these races, and they're supposed to just fall right out. I've never tried it, um, and I was actually doing some, you know, checking up on the internet, and I found an article about it, but I didn't see any videos, so we're actually going to do a video on it today. Um, and like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go take that outer, or, or sorry, the inner bearing in, we're going to weld a bead around it, because I already tried taking a punch, you know, and, and beating on it, and it wouldn't move, so we're going to try the welding trick on it. And then um, once I get that out, we'll probably use the press, shop press here uh, in this socket to press this one out. And if I have trouble and the welding trick works well, then we might do that on that one too. So that, guys, we're going to take this over there uh, to the welder, and uh, we're going to try this trick out. Okay, so I got the uh, welder set up here, and uh, put a piece of metal under here for anything that might drop down, because it can screw up your concrete, There's that slag sometimes. Uh, but I'm going to run a bead around this race, and hopefully this thing uh, uh, pop out of here. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, the first time I've tried this. Um, so hopefully it works and don't destroy nothing here. So with that, we'll get this thing turned on and give it a try.
So, I guess it worked, but <laughs> uh, not as quick as I thought it would, but uh, it is out, and uh, didn't damage anything, doesn't look like, so I think it's just a matter of the heat dissipation, because a lot of times, I was actually, um, right after I wanted that, I could touch it. I mean, that right now, it's just barely warm. So, and there's a lot of... A lot of metal that was in behind that race from, from those bearings getting chewed up. So. All right, so for the outer bearing, uh, I've got a two and five sixteen socket here with an extension that, that fits pretty well on the edges of the race there. So I'll try to get this straight. That's moving up. Actually, it is it's moving. <laughs> okay. I always like to make sure that, it's, that everything's moving before you go crazy. So this one, you can see a little bit better now how that was chewed up in there. I mean, it this it's worn in pretty good. So if you can see that there. So that's out. Now we'll get this guy cleaned up and uh, get ready to press the new ones in. All right, so we got uh, both the races out there and uh, everything cleaned up. Getting ready to go ahead and reinstall the new races. Uh, today I'm going to be using the OTC tool, uh, number 7180-7180. Uh, I actually bought this from O'Reilly's. They were the only ones I needed it quickly for a job, but I ended up putting a whole new hub on anyway, so I paid way overpaid for it. Uh, I, I ended up paying. I had like overnight shipping because um, O'Reilly's was the only one that actually had it like in their actual possession. Everybody else had to get it through um, OTC, which they're out of stock until like March or something. So. Um, I got it through O'Reilly's. I paid like 300 bucks plus like $20 in shipping and tax. It was like $350. Um, you can actually find these on Amazon. They are like $230 or something on Amazon and prime shipping and all that. So we'll put a link uh, for that uh, Amazon one on there. You save a little bit money than, more, than what I pay, but I, like I said, I had to have it in a hurry. Uh, so this tool, uh, as you can see here, it's got these like little chamfered edges and that, that fits down on the race. Which, I already set this one in there. So that kind of sits on there real nice. That way you don't damage that race when you're pressing it in. 
And I've heard, I, I heard a guy that said he modified one of these to use it for removing the races as well. I don't know exactly what he did. I didn't see pictures of it. Um, but it, it would work with, you'd have trouble using it on a, for removal on a steer hub because it's so, the clearances are so small. Um, on a drive hub, you could probably wouldn't have any trouble or on something a little bit bigger. But this with that outer bearing, it's, that hole is so small, you can't get this tool in there. So um, we can use it for installation, but it won't work for removal. That's why we had to put that weld around this and use a socket and press it out, as you saw earlier in the video. Um, so this is a pretty nice tool. Like I said, you can, it's adjustable. And uh, it actually has like little ramps here where you, you screw the center piece down, then it opens it up or closes it to, to fit the bearing. So I got it set up here. Um, you could probably use a hammer on this if you had to, to, to tap one in, but I'm just going to use the press. That way I got nice, easy pressure. So uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started here. All right, guys, so uh, we're going to go ahead. I talked about the tool a little bit here. Uh, I took a little break there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, outer bearing in here. And to make it a little bit easier, I took that and uh, put it in the freezer uh, here for about an hour or so to let that thing it'll get cold and then it contract and make it a little bit smaller hopefully, so it'll go in here a little bit easier. So um, I'm gonna do this really quick to keep that thing cold. Um, so it's it's gonna be kind of rushed here, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. We're gonna stick it in and, and press this thing in here. Hopefully it goes in really easy, so. So much for going this quick. Got to get it started. All right, so I've uh, got the uh, races pressed in here, and that pretty much concludes this job. Uh, this uh, truck, this is a ConMet hub, 
which typically they have a spindle spacer in them. And when I took this one apart, it was missing the spacer, which you can run them without the spacers. Um, you just do that, uh, your in play or uh, preload, you know, the uh, TMC RP 618 uh, procedure. Um, with this, I went ahead and I like the spacers and the preset the hubs myself. So I actually got uh, called Freightliner and got a whole kit here, which I was actually just calling for the spacer, which here's the brand new spacer that goes on the spindle. And uh, it actually came with a wheel seal too, a whole kit. So that was kind of uh, surprising. It was relatively cheap. I think this was only like $37. I mean, so a lot of times you can't even hardly buy a seal for that, um, let alone the spacer and everything. So when we put this back together, um, you know, we'll go through that procedure, the combat procedure where you turn them down. I think these, I think they're 300 foot pounds. I'll have to look on the instructions in here for, for steers, but, um, I believe they're 300. Um, then the outer spacer on the comets are two or the, not the spacer, but the outer locking nut, uh, jam nut is 200 foot pounds. I believe, uh, just going off the top of my head here before I read the instructions. Um, so anyways, uh, like I said, this, this hub was missing that spacer. And what probably happened with these steer hubs is that you have to, before you put the inner bearing, the big bearing in the back and put the seal in, you have to put this inside the hub because it won't go through um, that bearing. Now on the, um, on the drives, it's, you could pull it out through the front. Um, which, like I said, with this, this is the outer bearing here. And actually that will that will go through there so uh, I stand corrected <laughs> uh, I actually just worked on a Peterbilt uh, that had the same type of hubs and on that particular truck uh, those wheel bearings, they the this uh, spindle spacer would not go through the uh, the race on the outer side so once you, if you would put the bearing and the seal in the back on the uh, inner inner uh, uh, bearing you wouldn't be able to get this in so I mean typically that's what happened is a guy will forget to put it in or leave it out or something and they'll put the seal in and instead of eating the cost on a seal or something um, they just leave it out um, but uh, in this case like I said we're gonna put one back in but that's pretty much it uh, for this job guys uh, a lot of I usually don't do these it's typically the time you get into labor you can spend several hours on this so a lot of times I recommend to customers is just putting a whole new hub on because um, like I said, I can get a whole brand new hub kit that has everything ready to go on and it, it takes me like five minutes to put the thing together um, versus spending a couple hours out here trying to get races out and all that stuff and you risk damage in the hub in some cases since it is aluminum. Um, so a lot of times it's easier just to get a whole new hub assembly. Um, but we thought we'd do this one because we had some people um, ask about doing a video on it. So, so there you go. Um, yeah, guys, uh, that's pretty much all we got for today. Uh, appreciate y'all watching, uh, comments and all that, um, questions. Uh, we do the best we can on those on the channel. Uh, yeah, so if you're uh, new, please subscribe. Uh, hit the bell for the updates and uh, like the video. And uh, again, I guys can't stress enough, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. That's the best way to, to support us and uh, get more videos out there. Uh, your, get videos pushed to other people on YouTube. So, so please do that if you haven't already. And uh, again, thanks for all the support and everything. And uh, we'll see you next time.